when I sent her the price now, she's going, oh, no, um, I'm not paying that much because um, it should only, it, was, it should only have took you an hour or whatever. I said, what? I said, so now you're telling me how long a job's going to take me and you're telling me how much you're going to pay me. Look at the work that I go around and see. It's rubbish. Mm. It's been done by rubbish people, by rubbish, you know, how many, the jobs are done terribly and I am there fixing it. Hi there, Delroy Spark here from Eastway Electrical. Welcome to another episode of Van Talk. Today um, we've got some topics. Um, I'm going to discuss some difficulties I've had with um, some clients. Also going to touch on um, the trainee electrician who's come, come to get some experience with us, some work experience. And um, we're discussing um, your favourite um power tools you like using and type of work you like doing so um, we'll get on with it and see how it goes yeah this podcast is going to be weekly and if you'd like to sponsor us um, if you've got um, any services or products you want to get out to the trades um, information on the screen you can contact us um, this um, particular podcast is uh, sponsored by Omari he's um, <coughs> offering a service of um a consultancy service to um, trades, any trade, plumber, electrician, carpenter, whatever, um, who wants to grow their business. Um, his history with me is um, he came on board two, 2016. Um, the business was tanking. I, was, I was, wasn't in a good place with the business. I was actually working for an agency, working through an agency for some housing association. It wasn't good. But he came on board to help me out. Um, he's, this YouTube channel is all his idea. I don't know nothing about YouTube. It was all, everything's his idea. And um, he just revamped everything by pricing restructured my pricing um, my advertising um, redone the logo and researched about getting me this van and everything and ever since he's come on board it's just gone up and up and when in 2019 when I thought when the pandemic started and then it hit fully in 2020 I was really resistant I didn't want to um commit to anything because I thought um, what's going to happen if, if, if the work just dries up with the pandemic, everybody's uh, working from home and all that sort of stuff. But <laughs> I worked right through the pandemic. I was busy right through. And another thing he's done for me as well, he's got me a lot of work locally in my area. I work all over, but he's got me a lot of work all over. He's, um, Developed, he's done a new website, changed the website completely. I think he's going. To, he's currently doing another one. So he knows what he's doing, and at the moment he's got an offer. He's doing a consultancy, an hours consultancy for two hundred pounds, and um, the first ten people he'll offer it for with them. Um, they'll get a twenty five percent discount, so it'll be one hundred and fifty quid, and he'll go through. Um, how to grow your business, the pitfalls and stuff. He, he knows what he's talking about. So there's information on the screen where you can co contact him. And um, based on, I can only go by what he's done for me. He's done a brilliant job. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. So um, yeah, contact him. Yeah, so recently I've had a couple of problems with um, clients and stuff. Like um, just for Christmas, there's a client that I've been working for over, for a few years now doing various work. She's got some properties that she rents out and I've done work in there for her. So um, just for Christmas, I fitted a timer to an immersion eater in one of her flats. And um, what happened was I got a digital timer, fit, fitted it, and I was trying to set it up um, for the on and off times. But what it was, you had to put the on time and then the off time within a few seconds of that, else it with, else it goes, to, oh, it resets and you have to go back to the um and do it all over again. So the client wasn't there, and I couldn't get her on the phone because what I was going to say to her is, look, because I don't want to spend hours there, um, long time trying to set this up, and then it's costing her money because time is money. So. It's all up 
electrically sound. Instructions are there. The lady was as bad as me. She didn't have a clue how to do it. But she said her son would probably be able to do it. And the landlord, they can spend more time to set it up and get it working. In fact, I fitted that same time on another job and got it and it was working everything fine. Left it for a client, they got it working. So because of that now, I'm thinking of the client, I don't want to um, run up a load of the time, charge her. And I couldn't phone her to say, look, this is a situation. Are you okay with that? Or whatever. So I said, okay, then look, I'm just going to leave it. I'd leave you the instructions. You look, sort it out. So when I got back home, I had other jobs to go to. But when I got back home, I thought to myself, now, if they can't set that timer up, that's that lady's only means of hot water and she's got children i could see what, what was going to happen because it's near christmas everybody's busy so i thought look i'm going to go back up there i'm going to go back up there and um see if i can sort it out but when i got back up there the lady was getting ready to go out and i said i can't go, go, try and how many times to phone this client can't get hold of her so i said you know the best thing for me to do take that timer out put it back to normal so the woman can at least get hot water for tonight at least because uh, i could see it running over christmas and she wouldn't have any hot water and i didn't want that situation and i couldn't get to the client to discuss it so i just took it out and um i said what i'll do i'll take it home set it all up properly myself then i'll just bring it back and um because i didn't know it was going to cause this sort of aggravation so executive decision so i've done that and then I, I spoke to the client and um, she said, oh, okay, then can you do it after, after, sometime after Christmas? So I said, yes. So I went back um, last week or whenever and done it. And she, I said to her, look, you know the best thing? You get the time, you select a timer that you know that you can operate, right? It's easy, you go, look, I sent her some, some samples and I said, you choose the camp, you choose the one that you can operate. That's the easy, because for in a, say something happened, a power cut, something trips, they have to reset it. They have to now do it, don't they? I'm not going to go back and do it for them. So I, so I thought that was sensible. So she, um, she said, okay, fine. So when I got to the job now to fit this new time, I said, look, I lost the whole day just before Christmas and so the, ha the hour that you paid me as a deposit, that is gone. I'm gonna, it's going to be at least another hour, at least. I didn't say this is going to be, so at least another hour, whatever. And she goes, okay, cool. So the timer she got, it was a bit awkward to fit because I had to go and get wood. Because you have to see the cupboard, you'll see it in the film. It's a bit funny. I had to get a bit of, yeah, I had to get a bit of wood to, to fix the, to, luckily I had some cut it put it so it took a couple of hours for me to get it done properly mm. you know it's not a, it, you, you look at it it looks like a simple job mm. but to actually do it properly you know it wasn't simple anyway so I um I said to I, when I finished it I thought okay she already paid for that other timer I said I, I let her off some time to cover that the price why why did you do that because I thought it was because she's already paid for the timer. The what? The timer that she owns? No, the timer, the first timer. But what's that got to do with you? No, she paid me a deposit for first hour plus the price of the timer. Okay. Right. So I've done the job now. Mm. It was, I said, right, I'll knock off some time and that will cover the price of the timer that she's already paid for. price of the timer that she's already paid for yeah and what's happened to that timer though it, i was it was used in another job oh you've used it on another yeah job? yeah okay, okay. it was used in another job so I, I won't charge all the time i've worked i'll knock off some time for the to show good faith also for the price for the timer she's paid for because she bought the second timer okay right so when i sent her the price now she's going oh no um i'm not paying that much because um it should only it, was, it should only it took you an hour or whatever. I said what? I said so now you're telling me how long a job's going to take me, and you're telling me how much you're going to pay me. And I said you know what, lady, you do what you want. 
you pay what you want, whatever. I can't be bothered. I'm not going to argue with you. I've sent you my invoice. You pay. If you don't want to pay, you don't pay. It's your business. Okay? I don't want aggravation. So she hasn't paid it. <laughs> she hasn't paid it. <laughs> so what are you going to do then? But you know what? I was thinking I was going to go to the small claims court, but I'm not going to bother. I said to her, don't phone me up again. Don't bother me. You, you got any more work, don't come to me. I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> I'm not going to give myself a headache over a couple hundred quid. I can't be bothered. Yeah. But I won't let it, I, but it won't happen again because for one, if the client is not on the job and the, her representative being the tenant can't pay me when I'm finished, then don't bother. Either they've got to pay me um, X amount of deposit that covers more than whatever, or forget it, I won't do the job. Because that has been the problem. I've been doing work for people and they're not there. And they don't see what you have to go through. To, or you can't discuss nothing with them because they're on the phone. They're busy in meetings. You know, I always like to keep people informed. I don't want to finish a job and here's a bill. You're either there to see what I'm doing or I can keep you informed what I'm doing. Because for going on to the thing with the EICR where I'd done, someone done the EICR and I'd done the work. And um, the, uh, I, I said to her, I said, look, she's in Denmark, right? She's in Denmark and she's, she's left her, she's got a tenant. And the tenant's a really nice guy, really, really nice person, cooperative, helpful, everything. But um, when I finished my first day's work, because I'll tell you what happened, right? I couldn't get on with it straight away. There's a few little things. That, um, she wanted a light put up, which wasn't um, part of the EICI. It was just an extra part of the job. And outside her front door, so that when the when a tenant comes in, he's not in the dark. Yeah. So I said to myself um, to help them out, make things uh, better. Thinking about the client, what I'll do, I'll do that first because when he comes home, he won't come in the dark because it was late last year. So I went and I done that. Okay. And she'd already paid the deposit. Right, so that was part of it. It wasn't completely cut, um, thing. And then in between, there was an emergency call out to the same job. They lost power. Well, he lost power on a Sunday night, right? And he phoned me about nine o'clock Sunday night. I said, I can't come out now. I can come tomorrow. So he had to spend the, the, the um, whole night in darkness and without any heating or anything or power. So when I went there the next day to do it, it was something to do with the meter. The meter was an ordinary meter, he thought, but then it, had, it was a smart meter, but it reverted to pay as you go. So the meter, they, they've been paying quarterly or ever, whatever, and then for some reason, the meter decided to revert to pay as you go. So, and it looked like they'd run out of credit. Anyway, the, I had to spend time phoning up the uh, supply of the supply people to cut, tell them all about the meter, explain what was written on, what was displayed on the meter. And, and that's how they come to the conclusion that the meter reverted. And I didn't know that could happen. Anyway, and there's the other issue with his flat being on the same fuse as another flat. Because it was a house with a number of flats. Anyway, they came and they restored his power. They didn't really sort the meter out but they restored it to what it was. And there's still issue, ongoing issues. So after that now, a couple of weeks later, I went back to start the actual remedial work, right? So when I finished that day now, I wanted to payment. That was the agreement. When I'm finished, I've got to get paid. Remember, I've allowed, because um, there was a deposit paid. So they're putting up the light, then the emergency work, now I've done the, so now she's got some more money to pay. And she's saying, oh, um, and I could, you couldn't get her. You can't get her during the day because several times I said to the client, could you get her on, give her a bell so we can keep her informed of what's going on? But they couldn't get her. So anyway, I sent a bill and um, she's saying, oh, she's not comfortable paying me because she's had a couple of electricians and they've not been good or whatever. And 
because the electrician that done the EICR, she couldn't contact her because she wouldn't answer her phone. However, I said, look, if I had dodgy electricians or dodgy tradesmen, it's not my business, nothing to do with me. I'm a professional, you know what I mean? I'm saying, you can get older me, I'm all over the place. So, in the book, on the internet, whatever, you got my email, whatever, I can't, you can't miss me. So, she was going on and on about, oh, uh, she doesn't feel comfortable paying me that until she get the certificate. So I said, look, you either pay me or whatever, I won't be doing any more work. And she said, I said, look, once I'm finished, you will get a certificate for the work that I've done. And she goes, oh, could you give me that in writing? So I said, all right. Then. So I sent her an email explaining that, and then she was satisfied, so she paid me, right? And then I went back and completed the whole thing, and um, I, got, I got my payment, and I sent her a certificate. But the difficulty, because you'll see, I've wor I was working in the cellar a lot of the times, and across there's a pipe running across the cellar like that. It's a low ceiling, so I couldn't go over the pipe because I'm thinking if I slip and drop on that eight, six inch or eight inch pipe, that's going to burst and more aggravation for you. So I had to keep ducking under this pipe. There's all of the things on the floor in my way. Got a runner cable along. It was a nightmare. But anyway, these, and again, she wasn't there, right? And that's the problem I keep having when people aren't there and you give them the bill after, they, they're not happy or whatever. Because you know what, basically, I would say it's very rare you come across a client that really wants to pay. They, don't want, they want work done, but they don't really want to pay for it. That's what I've sussed out. There's one in two clients that are really happy with the work you've done and pay you happily. But that's few and far between. And recently, I went to a job where full on this... Uh, circuit again ring circuit you know the usual thing and trace the fault split the ring sorted it all out but then when i the, doing my final test the rcd wouldn't trip it kept tripping when there was a fault but now i'd sorted out the fault and i had done my zs test and that was high that was a high reading and um then i'd done tried the rcd trip and it wouldn't trip I tried it on another circuit and it tripped that, that RCD trip it was a split board. So I couldn't figure out what's going on. I've been there about an hour and a half now. So the sockets were working, but the my meter is telling me that there's a high ZE and the RCD isn't tripping. So that's telling me there's something wrong there. So when I was and they were there while I was doing it. So I was trying to explain to them, and the woman says to me, Oh well. We're nearly two hours down and nothing's been done. <laughs> I've been here for an hour and a half working, sorting out the fault, and you're saying nothing's been done. This is what I'm saying in my mind. And I've had this before. I've had this before. Be you trace a fault, sort it out, but there's something that can't be fixed. You have to come back another time or do it, whatever. And this, they feel like you haven't done the job. You know, that sort of really annoys me. You know, I've had that a few times. I don't know what these people ex expect. So, you know, those are sort of little difficulties that um, you come across and that I've come across recently. Well, in the future, what can you do? What, what would you, what do you reckon I should do there? Because I've done my job. I've found the fault. And for me, to, there's sometimes you find, you find the fault and really and truly I think you just have to, everything just comes down to communication because um, and everything needs to be explicitly laid out before to the customer probably in writing at the point at which they accept the job in that that basically most faults are found and rectified but there are situations where we're unable to we might be able to identify the fault, but we might not be able to rectify it right away and some further work might be re required. But what I'm saying is that most of the time, these things can come can be avoided when things are communicated explicitly. So a lay person might not know, they might not know. They might expect, right, you're just gonna come back around like a magi magician if it's not communicated to them. Beforehand. But, but you say that 
And you're probably right, but I don't really think customers look at it from how you're looking at it. Not a lot of customers, because for a start, mate, look at the work that I go around and see. It's rubbish. Mm. It's been done by rubbish people, by rubbish. You know, how I many the jobs are done terribly and I am there fixing it, right? Sometimes I can get it going. Other times you need to do more. Sometimes I've been into a job, mate, where I've tested a ring circuit and it was just terrible. I said, look, at the end, I've been there about one two, and a half, two hours. And I said, look, you have to rewire this because it's, it's just terrible. And they're upset. They're thinking, oh, you've been here two hours or whatever and it's not working. I'm saying the work was done, wasn't done properly in the first place. So you have to, you, the only way you can do it is rewire it. You know, people, what, what can you do in a situation like that? Yeah. yeah. I just think a lot of people, a lot of unreasonable people, don't, they, re, they don't realise, you know, they may, maybe they didn't get the work done. They bought the place and it's like that. But what can you do? Yeah, no, there's going to be unreasonable people, 100%. But, and those people you can't, legislate for so if someone's unreasonable then no matter what you do you're going to get an unreasonable reaction but there may be a portion of the customers that are just ignorant to this field this this industry and how things work so you can maybe avoid certain disputes with more forthright upfront communication Right. Well, you say that. I think I'm very upfront, and I communicate. Because no, I'm not. No, I'm not saying that you're not upfront communicator. What I'm trying to say is, you need letting the customer know in advance what the potential outcomes are. Oh, oh, okay, okay. No, I. You know what I mean, I am. Well, the thing is, so you have a disclaimer when you're saying that you're paying for you're paying for the service of fault finding. Mm. I will be identifying the faults. Most most faults are able to be resolved, mm. but there are instances where further work may be re, may be required to, for example, reinstate power. Well, the thing is, mate, P, when they phoned me initially, they a lot of people said, "So how long will it take to work?" And I said, "Mate, our fault finding it could take an hour, it could take half hour. I could be there for three hours." That's Usually, that's the long in what finding one of these type of faults. That's the longest I've been three hours. It took me three hours to to not not to find the fault to sort it out, to sort it out. It was a that but that's few and far between. Usually, I find a fault and sort it out within an hour. Mm. You know, the problem is though as well is that you're going out with fault finding. Invariably, you're going out and you're working on shoddy workmanship because this is what i'm saying to you if that's done properly are their faults going to occur as frequency you're more likely to get faults on shoddy workmanship than you are yeah. on good workmanship aren't you so invariably more most of these jobs are badly done so that might need to be explained or something you with know, with yeah. good workmanship you may get loose connection you know it's been wired properly but maybe someone's come to change the socket and tighten up things properly. You know, a fault like that. Where if still, that's technically still not great work. Yeah. It's loosely connected. You yeah. Say. So if something is completed, completely installed to a good standard, mm. are you going to... What's the likelihood of faults? Reduced significantly. Yeah, reduced by significantly. Yeah, and and the fault is easier to resolve if the mm. job's done properly. Exactly. So you know? Yeah. And the thing about it, like, you can... Look, it's not me making up. You can see from the work that I do mm. that there's a lot of shoddy installations out there. Look at the one I've done just across the road there the, um, the other day for in that car park. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> so I, I scratched my head. So I said, I would love... I can if I could come across a job that's done properly and I could go and I could film and say, yeah, look, this is nice work. I'd be more than happy to say. I don't want to be critical. And the thing is, I I try not to criticize because it's easy for one tradesman to go and criticize another tradesman's work. I don't I try not to criticize. I just do the job and film it and you see what it is. 
You know, I don't be, I'm not saying to the client, oh, yeah, this electrician was rubbish or anything like that. I would never do that. You know, that well, it's not my place to say that. So well, you have said that the work is, you can't be an electrician. That don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I have said that. I have said that. I have said that. that. But I think that's, that's yeah, well, that's true. But when I, I've said that, sorry, but um, it's obvious, you know, something like that. I, I don't think a qualified electrician would do that. I think that's fair comment for me to say that. Well, maybe it's not fair comment for me to say that, but that's what I'm thinking. And I've said it out loud. I think, no way. Can't be a qualified electrician's done this. Someone who, who <coughs> thinks they know about electricity that's done it. Mm. You know? So, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's that. You know, I don't know what the people watching, if they've come across, how uh, they resolve their things, how uh, uh, they come across. Say in the comments if you've come across anything like that and how you deal with it. <laughs> Might help me out. <laughs> Yeah, the recent video um, that went up, there's some comments about um, putting it, uh, um, when I've resolved the fault, I could have put it on the 20 amp. And you know what? That's right, because I made a mistake there because there was a 20 amp spear weight in the fuse board and I said to the guy, oh, I need a 16 amp, and he went and got a 16 amp. I could have put it on that 20 amp. That was just an oversight, to be honest. It's after he got the six, and I was fixed, I thought, look, that 20 amp was there. I could have fitted it there, because that would have been fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just that oversight, mm -hmm. my mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. But it's easy sitting down at home. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I saw, and I, I, I sit in my head after when I, when I saw I said, oh my gosh, I could just put it on the 20 amp, because that was a sphere. You know, you didn't need, I didn't need to go and get a, didn't need to go and get a 16 amp, you know, so that's right. you saying that 16 amp is too, like too No, 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 16 amp is fine because um, I think there was something about, I saw a comment where he said um, it should be a 32 surely in the kitchen, but no, because look, if you, in a, in a typical domestic property, a house, three-bedroom house, mm -hmm. if you sit down and you work out the power consumption in that kitchen, in that, in that property, right, and you add diversity on it, it's less than, it's less than 40 amps or 30 amps. <laughs> There's not much power consumption in a, in a domestic property. So... It's just um, standards, like for instance, for example, when you when you when I'm at college, when you're at college, you're working out cable size. If you do cable sizing for a lighting circuit in a house, it would you could probably you, the calculation would say the cable size you need is 0.75, but they're up it to 1.5. That's the standard. Yeah, that's that. Two point when you do wire when you if you've done the cable cal calculation for sockets, that will probably work out to one mil or one five. But we the standard is two five. When you work out the standard um, main fuse for a uh, domestic property property is either sixty or a hundred amp. Right? That's way above the consumption of the of what's actually consumed in the property. So, 16 amp is fine. There's no problem with that at all. There's nothing in a kitchen that's going to overload a circuit like that, as far as I know. <coughs> okay. Cool. So, how's the how's things going on? What's the, you got a new staff member? Or someone not staff member. But yeah, Dami, Dami. Right. Um, like, Dami, he took his chances. He came, paid and came down to the event. We met him, and um, it was you actually who suggest because you're saying, get down like that, get down. You're, you're gest gesturing to me to get him. And so, I we were lucky enough, he's doing a rewire, and I invited him down. And he came, and what he is, what does he do? What is he using? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's um, in fact, I, I, I'm gonna have a chat with him to for him to explain exactly how he's his route into the business. But from what I know, he's done some course, I think he only started last early last year and he'd done a course and um i think he's still it's an ongoing thing but now but he's got no practical um experience apart from in the workshop or where the course is 
which is completely different to when you're on site. So uh, you'll see him in some of the videos where he's um, come along and he's helping. I'm doing a kitchen installation and he's come and he's helped out on there. But with the, the thing I like about Dammy so far is um, he's a humble guy, he's very keen and um, he's very keen and um, he's, a, he's a nice person to work with. Seems like an all round nice guy, which is good because you know you're working with him every day in close bus you need someone you can get on with and he's respectful and he's got his he's got his he's got his tools which is good and he's going to build up with that going to build up on that get some more and which is a sign of a good tradesman right so all he needs is a bit of practice and a bit of guidance and he'll be fine i'm sure of it so hopefully i can help him with that you know Give him a bit of practical knowledge because it, it's that's the most important. You know, you go to college, you might be bright and learn all the technical side, but if you can't do the work, you're no good to anyone on site anyway. You know, so um, that's why I hope I can help him out with the with that side of it. Cool. Yeah, I get a lot of um, emails and people phoning me up asking for. To work and all that but uh, there's no point because at the moment we're not taking on anyone and like with Dami, Dami took a chance didn't he and it's worked out which is good he took his, his initiative he put his he, he paid for, paid and came down to the event and took a chance and this it's worked out good so um you done there was a poll on this on the channel wasn't there mm -hmm. so what yeah. Well, you want to go through that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I'll be putting up more polls. I think I just put one up today. So, if you go on the YouTube channel community tab, it's about fuse boards for you to um, suggest um, vote for what the best managed manufacturer of domestic fuse board are. But, I've, but the polls that have already been completed, let me just get done. So yeah, I asked people what power tool brands do you like using and why? And the options were Hilti, Bosch, DeWalt, Milwaukee and other list in the comments. Well, the thing is, like I'm, funny enough, I'm no expert on power tools and stuff like that. I usually ask Dennis, my mate Den, or Marley. Marley knows about tools and power tools. It's good, you know, so I usually ask them to. But in my experience, I the one that I like, favour, is Hilti. But the thing with Hilti, Hilti is very expensive. When I first started Eastway, I had Hilti to add a, a big um, battery power drill with Hilti, and that lasted me ages until it conked out. And it got nicked from the van. But it was conked out. They when they opened it and see because what I was hoping to do is take it to the Ilti shop and trade it because you could do that, right? So and I also I got my Hilti two forty volt nicked as well. So I I'm replaced. I've been buying Dewalt now just because Hilti is very dear. It's very expensive, you know. I might still get a Hilti power drill, battery drill, you know. But that would be the one if I had. If you said to me. Here's the money, go and buy one, I'd buy Hilti. What are they saying in the poll? So the poll, uh, so bottom was actually Hilti was 60, 6%, sorry, <laughs> 6%. Okay. Then uh, in, uh, then it was Bosch with 13%, then other. So you're starting from lower? Yeah. I'm going higher. Yeah, okay. The lowest one. Yeah. Other was 21%. So, in other, there was uh, Makita, uh, Black and Decker, Ryobi. Oh, that's a blast from the past. Black and Decker. Black and Decker, uh, Black and Decker, Black and Decker. Yeah. That's a blast from the past, Black and Decker. <laughs> um, and then it was Milwaukee with 24% and then DeWalt with 35%. All right, because if you ask Den or Marlon, they would go for Milwaukee because apparently Milwaukee is the business nowadays. When I was back in the day, back in the 70s, 80s, the tool of choice was Stanley. It's always Stanley, Stanley, 
Stanley Tools. And I, I, someone told me that Stanley and DeWalt were the same company. I don't know. But yeah, I think... Um, but in those days, we didn't have power. We didn't have those battery jewels and all them things anyway. But yeah, uh, it's not surprising that DeWalt come top because you see most people with DeWalt. And now, I think that Milwaukee is running them close by, like in the pole. Yeah. Um, so then I also asked... Do you think electrical YouTube, electrical content on YouTube has helped you improve as an electrician? 89% people said yes. Oh, okay. 11% said no. I must admit, I don't watch YouTube electricians unless you send me a video to watch something. And then, then sends me videos as well. He watches that artisan. Yeah, he watches artisan. Um, and people are asked, why do you watch Eastway Electrical? For entertainment or to learn and pick up tips? <laughs> entertainment. 52% people said for entertainment. Mm, 48% okay. to learn and pick up tips. Mm. Well, I can't answer that because Eastway, Eastway is not my idea, it's your idea. So, if anything, I, I, I don't know nothing about it, mate. As an electrician, qualified or trainee what type of work do you enjoy most and why fault finding testing and inspection first fix second fix or general repairs and maintenance when i was younger i would go for like first fixing and second or rewiring this time in life fault finding is cool i, I don't fault finding is interesting you know i don't really like doing the icrs or rewires to be honest Obviously, I do them, but I don't enjoy them. Fault finding, in most cases, is quite it's interesting, you know. So, yeah, what did they say? Testing and expert inspection was bottom. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Seven percent. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, yeah, I don't fourth know. place was general repairs and maintenance. Oh, no, joint third place was first fix and general repairs and maintenance both on mm -hmm. okay and then second place was second fix <laughs> people like the easy life just go when it's when all the dirty work's done just go around second fixing mm. you know something talk about that charles when i was on the tool when i was on the building sites yeah in the 70s right i had never done a second fixing job always doing they're doing what they call the carcassing like like flats like these that are going up i'll be there in the mud and dust mud in the winter dust in the summer running the cables or running the conduit the pyro whatever and then they'd move me from that job to another job the same thing or to a or to a uh, an industrial job where you're doing trunking and tray and conduit but never i never had a job where it's nice and clean and you're doing the second fixing <laughs> i always wanted that when i was a and when i was in in the 70s but never got it <laughs> so um yeah when top was fault finding with 35 percent okay okay cool well i wouldn't have been good at fault finding in them days Right now, yeah. And then, um, yeah. So anyway, right now we've got a poll up um, where it says, uh, who makes the best domestic consumer units? And we've got options, Hager, Crabtree, Schneider, Wilex, and other suggestions um, in the comments below. So if you go to the YouTube channel at the uh, community tab, you'll see the poll there and you can, uh, participate in that okay cool um, yeah um i don't know that car wash job which i done the other no that well it's a it's a parking place and they've got a car wash on site yeah but then again charles mate it's um my mate the um it's an installation that's not done that great you know they've used a uh a, a, a small cable a four mil cable on a long run and um, you know he's got quite a. It's not that powerful, but it's it's a jet wash with a with a with a 
motor on it and the startup kind of trips there because what they done Chelsea, <laughs> these people do dangerous things what's happened is you've got the hut where they've run a cable from the hut a lot over into the um car washing area they've used a four mil cable they should have used i would i would have used a 10 mil cable right just to because it's quite a long run and they've put a six mil cable and they put a 50 amp fuse a four mil cable for a four mil cable i think the top you could go is 32 amp you would you would use 20 but maybe 32 but that would be slightly too much, but 20. so what's happened this is at what i reckon they've put either 32 amp or 20 amp mcb in turn the motor on done it use it and it's tripped so what they've done, they've gone got, got and got a 50 amp. <laughs> Put it in. Remember, the main fuse is usually 60 or maybe, I think the main fuse there was 80 or something. <laughs> so they've gone and bought a 50 amp. So when that mo when that thing starts, it won't trip. <laughs> but <laughs> but that's, that cable, that formula cable would burn out before that trips because the fuse is supposed to protect the cable right so i've gone there now and seen it i said hold up that's that's 20 uh, once i've looked i wasn't sure it looked like 2.5 but i wasn't sure so when i saw it on i looked at the cable on the marking four mil i said no nah, man for four mil you need a 20 amp mcb mm. but at the time i didn't realize that that jet watch thing was mm. that powerful mm. so i went away and got a 20 amp put it in and then <laughs> it tripped and so when it tripped i went to the fuse board i switched it, and when you switch it on you could hear the fuse board rattling that's weird because i'm thinking so it, it's traveling through the cable and <laughs> rattling the fuse board. I, I tell you i've been you know i've been in this trade a long time mm. but i come across things that i've never seen still i'm still coming because it was jerking in the fuse board boy you know te someone technical can explain that to me but I, <laughs> yeah but um what in the end um what the guy said he's going to do he's going to get a less powerful jet washer it's going to hire one and say he must have done because he hasn't called me so he must have got a, a jet washer that works and don't trip that you know so yeah okay. so that's how it's got cool. across that yeah uh thanks for watching again another talk uh van talk and um we'll see you next time okay thank you bye